This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to be taking an inside look at corner options. If you'd like to follow along, go under your file menu to open, and in the sample files folder, go down to 0407 inside corner options and just click open. Things have changed dramatically in CS5 when it comes to corner options. To see what I mean, go to your selection tool and just click on the left hand image on the page. And then go into your object menu to corner options. The first thing you can see is now you can apply different corner options on each one of the four corners. If I wanted to keep the options the same on all four corners, I could click on this little link. And you can see now they're all linked together. So if I change one, I'm changing them all. That's the way corner options had always worked in the past. But if I unlink the four fields and make a change to, let's say, my upper left corner, I'm going to click down on the options that are available and go all the way down to rounded. And now I'm going to click my up arrow to the left of the field until I get to 0.75. If nothing is happening, you have to check preview. Now that I have that upper left corner the way I want it, I'm just going to click OK. And to make things interesting, I'm going to select the right image and go back under the object menu to corner options, leave the link deselected, choose rounded for the lower right corner, and start clicking my up arrow until I get to 0.75. So that's kind of nice. A rounded corner to the upper left on my left image and a rounded corner to my lower right on the right image. And I'm just going to click OK. But wouldn't it be great if I could change my options for the corners without having to go under the object menu to corner options? Why don't we select the center image and the little yellow square to the upper right? If I click on that, you can see it says I can click to edit corners. Let me do that. Now, if I just go to any one of these diamonds in any one of the corners and just click and drag, it's going to apply a corner option. In this case, rounded. But maybe I only want to apply the options to a single corner. Let me hit Command Z, Control Z to undo this. To apply a corner option to just, let's say, the lower right corner. Instead of just clicking and dragging on that diamond, I'm going to hold down my shift key to confine the change to just that one corner. And maybe I want to do the same thing to the lower left corner. I'm just going to hold down my shift key and drag inward until I can't drag any further. So the bottom of my shape is now totally rounded. Kind of cool. But what if I didn't want rounded? If I just held down my Option Alt key and clicked on one of these corners, it's going to run through the options. But that would apply the same options to all of the corners, not what I want. But if I hold down Option Alt and Shift and then click on a corner, you can see it's running through the various options for just that one corner. Let me keep doing it. And I'm going to go back to the bevel. Maybe I want a bevel on the lower left corner as well. If I Option Alt Shift, click on that diamond, I'm running through the options that are available. And now I have bevels on the bottom, which is kind of nice. You know, it's pointing down towards the headline. So it's kind of leading the eye. We're going to continue discussing working with objects and frames in the next lesson.